we all dream. The capacity for dreaming and pursuing those dreams is a gift that God has given to every person. But many people can't even begin to describe their dreams, much less figure out how to reach them. And many people have even let setbacks or failures or obstacles steal those dreams. I'm Philip Wagner, author of Unlock Your Dream. My hope is that you would discover how to reach the dreams in your life that really matter. I want you to know it's never too early or too late to uncover a God-given purpose in your life. You can be inspired to move in the direction of your dreams with passion and overcome the obstacles in the way. New Year's is a time where people start thinking about doing things differently. Maybe a goal or maybe some people might still make New Year's resolutions. I think a lot of people, you know, I don't think that's very effective, but we have ideas of maybe things we'd like to change for uh, our life to be different or better in the new year. I mean, how many of you had enough struggles and disappointments in 2016, like you're happy to say goodbye? I'm glad there's a new year, right? Yeah, um, because we, we go through these difficult times and and it's time to, we want to think, what, what can we do different and better and what will be newer in our life? And uh, the thing is, I got a little secret for you. You don't have to wait for January 1st. You can, like, change any day that you want. But let's just go with what we got today, you know, New Year's Day. But the Bible says his mercies are new every morning. So you can start again, get a fresh start. That's the kind of God that we have. He wants to... Um, separate us from the past and failures and do something new in us. And so today, we're starting this series called Unlock Your Dream. We're going to go through it through the month of January. And I saw that book, and I thought it was a great title, so I thought I'd teach on it. And, um, but we're going to go through different ways. And here's, I have two things that we want to look at and explore and, and think about. And one is... My, my goal is that you would be inspired to sort of clarify dreams for your life and sort of awaken what might have been left behind and um, then be able to identify and pursue and reach that dream. That's the first thing. And the second thing is I, I want to introduce to you this idea that there are God dreams, special dreams, special purposes that God has for you and for your life, and um, help you to understand that and, and bring that into the mix when you're thinking about um, the dreams in your life, because the God dream for you is perfect. It's amazing. You know, you, when you are in this God dream, I'll talk to you more about it, but that's when you're in the zone, and we'll talk about that. In Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12, it says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. So hope deferred are those things that we reach for, that we wish for, that we desire or, or dream about, and then it's derailed. We fail, it doesn't happen, it, it doesn't work out right, and so it makes the heart sick. So when I said, how many of you are just glad 2016 is over? Some of that clapping was, yeah, this has been hard. It's kind of stolen a little bit of joy in my life. So I'm ready to say goodbye to that. And it says, but dreams fulfilled is a tree of life. It's, it, it brings our soul alive. There's something uh, about it that when dreams begin to die in our life that our shoulders sag a little. Something kind of dies on the inside of us. And we face these setbacks and problems and failures. And, and that's why we're, we're talking about unlock the dream because it might be locked down on the inside. Maybe you've given up. Maybe somebody disqualified you or worse, you might have disqualified yourself. And so we're going to look at this and see what God can do. And, and we are here in Los Angeles, 
Hollywood is like the city of dreams, they say. And every year, 100,000 people come in and out of Los Angeles looking to reach their dreams. Pastoring here, I've heard people talk about their dreams um, all the time. It's important to their life. And, and we even call America the land, uh, uh, the American dream, the land of dreams, you know, because people have the freedom and the ability to start over and do something good with their life. I um, went to see a movie over the holidays called La La Land. And um, I, I enjoyed it. And um, if you haven't seen it yet, I'm going to ruin it for you right now. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to. But you may want to go, la, 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 while I'm talking. Um, but it's about a young girl who's an actress, wants to be an actress, so she's serving celebrities lattes and cappuccinos while she, and while she goes to auditions and tries to get work and fulfill her dream. And then she it, falls in love with this guy who's a musician and kind of doing his same thing where he's playing in venues he doesn't really want to play in, but he's trying to get this going in his life. And so uh, what begins to unfold is that they're faced with decisions they need to make personally that threaten both the dreams and the relationship. And so that's all I'll tell you. But the point is, you get into these places in life where you've got to make decisions. And are you going to make decisions to reach these dreams? Or you make decisions that will cost you a relationship? And many times we hear about the businessman who put everything into his business and he's climbing to the top, but then he loses his family because he never really spent time with them. He's just focused on the goal. And so is that really how we want to do our life? And, and it's, it's a good thing for us to evaluate some of this because we're investing our life in it. And, uh, but we, we all have dreams. And, and today I'm going to talk to you about three dream keys, three dream keys that might help unlock dreams in your life. And, and the first one is everyone has dreams for their life. You know, you're... you're it doesn't matter if you're a child or a teenager or an adult or a senior. Everybody has dreams. You may have forgotten yours. You may have left some behind. And maybe there were some that were just childish, you know, childhood dreams. But everywhere I've traveled around the world in different countries, whether it's Haiti or Africa or America, everybody has some kind of dream in their life. And um, uh, I want you to know that you get to have more than one. This is important because people say, what is your dream? And I feel like I'm not sure what to say. I want to get it right because I'm only given one. I think the better question is, what are some of your dreams? Oh, thank you for the permission to have more than one. So I can say a few things, um, but often we don't feel like we've got one because we've gotten lost along the way. And, um, you know, the Bible says, uh, Paul said, when I was a child, I thought like a child, I understood like a child, and I talked like a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. So... Um, Maybe there's some dreams we put aside. The, the first dream that I remember having as a little kid is that I wanted to be the first white Harlem Globetrotter. <laughs> Don't laugh, it's personal. Um, when I was a little kid, I used to love basketball, and in the 60s, they were like, all, the, the great players played there. There's, and um, so I used to watch them, and I thought it was fun, and, and so I would turn on that music, Sweet Georgia Brown, in my house, and, and I would, like, try to spin the ball and try not to break a lamp. Or, and, um, but um, I don't know if you know this about me, but my dad was a white guy. <laughs> and um, my mom was whiter. <laughs> so it's probably a little childish idea. 
And so then I just moved on to other dreams, you know, like kids have. Like, you know, being a baseball player, a basketball player, a doctor. Girls want to be, you know, a, a dancer or, or business person, whatever they want to do, you know. And so when I was in college, I mean, when I was in high school, my dream was to play college basketball. And from the ninth grade to the 12th, I probably played two or three hours every single day. I was in the gym, 7 a.m., and played. And, and uh, when I was getting to be a senior, um, I realized that I was short and slow. <laughs> you can't be both, I don't think. <laughs> and, but I, I was like holding on to it. He was like, I can jump and grab a hold of the rim. You know, like I could shoot pretty well and I could grab the rim, but I don't think there in the history of college basketball, a coach ever said, he can grab the rim, let's put him in <laughs> because the game's on the line. So we had to, I had to put things aside and we, we do have to evaluate. Sometimes we're holding on to things that emerge out of this is what I've always wanted to do as a child. It might be a good thing it may need some reevaluation, and but we all have dreams. And some people have told me, um, I don't, I don't know if I have a dream. It makes me think that we've either forgotten, left it way behind, or maybe just hesitant to pick something. But you know, your dream doesn't have to be some big grandiose dream like it. It's going to change the world for everybody. In fact, your dreams don't have to change the world for everybody. It just has to change the world for somebody. And that makes a big difference. That changes how we look at it. But um, I have this quote in the book that says, while most childhood dreams may be implausible, they teach us that dreams are wonderful goals to reach toward. And I think it's good, um, you could pursue dreams of where you want to go on vacation or what you'd like to do or, uh, in life, but as long as the dreams that we have uh, don't take us away from the purpose of God in our life. And I'll talk about that more in a minute, but uh, dreams are a good practice and uh, it, it keeps us thriving. And um, you know, some dreams though, in reality, we just need to let it go. You know, I like this quote I read from Jim Carrey, the, the comic actor, and he said, I think everybody should get rich and famous and do everything they dreamed of so they can see that it's not the answer. He said that after he did all that. And um, so there are personal and meaningful uh, dreams that we can reach. In the book that I wrote in the introduction, not really an introduction, but a dedication. And I wrote this. To all the dreamers who imagine a higher version of your story. To all the dreamers who have stumbled or have been knocked down along the way, who've been disqualified, dismissed, or overlooked, whose dreams are locked up somewhere in your soul, but still have a flame of hope burning inside that causes you to imagine what could be. To all the dreamers who are fighters, to cancer survivors, and to those who are still in the fight, to overcomers of the variety of life's battles, and to those whose dream is for those you love to keep fighting, to all the dreamers who dare to believe, dare to trust, and are willing to take the risk, who start a business, express your art, sing your song, Plan a church, create ideas, tell your stories, build family, become humanitarians and philanthropists, loving people and changing the world, and who are willing to pursue the highest dream of your life, the God dream. So that's what this is all about, to those of you who've been on this journey. The um, first key is everybody has a dream, so it includes you. It should cause you to ask questions. The second one is there is a God dream inside you. 
Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world. It's talking about us not being shaped by culture and society, but be willing to do something different, live a higher way. It says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then, everybody say then. Then, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. This is the thing about the God dream. It's good, you will like it. It is uh, perfect. It will, it, you will say, this is it. That, I mean, this is one of the things that I'm on earth to do. It's good, it's pleasing, you'll, you'll like it. It's perfect. It says God's will, I'm talking about the God dreams that he puts in our life to make a difference. Then the J.B. Phillips translation, a lot of people who like to study the Bible will look at that translation and it says, don't let the world around you squeeze you into its mold. You know, some people follow their first dreams only to discover another kind of dream that involves reaching beyond themselves to change the world for others. And there's probably a higher version of our dreams available. You know, Joseph in the Bible, we learn about him in the book of Genesis, and I'll just tell you one simple thing, and, and that is he had a dream that, <clears throat> that God gave him, but he had a really poor interpretation of it. And so a couple decades later, when he fulfilled the dream, he had changed. Things have been working in him. And when he first saw it, he thought, I'm going to be famous. I'm going to be cool. My family's going to love me. And it wasn't about him being successful so that everybody would admire him. It was about a man who could be trusted to care for other people and get blessing and provision to those who are starving and hungry and homeless and, and make decisions that could honor God. I don't know if you found this out, but sometimes telling your family your dreams, it's a dream that they'll all like it. You know what I mean? It's like some of them are just jealous. Some just want you to fail because they think they're going to fail. So it's just like, it's like, hey, I'm going to reach this dream. I hate you. Hope you fail. <laughs> Maybe not for you. <laughs> um, but here's what I believe in my heart. Without intervention from heaven to understand why we're here and what our purpose is, we can entangle ourselves in lesser dreams. And the lesser dreams keep many people occupied. But there are dreams that you could have the power of heaven behind you because it's gonna make a difference in the world. The third key that I'll talk about today is you can unlock your dream. And unlocking your dream involves a couple different kinds of things. We, you will always face barriers. So it, the dream could be, need to be unlocked because we need to prepare for it. It could be that we've left it behind so it's been on lockdown in our soul. Maybe um, somebody that you respect said, you, you'll never be successful or you can't do this. So that, that voice, that accusation is in your heart and so you're afraid to take a risk. It could be that what we need the most in our soul has been taken a beating and so it's hard for us to trust people or trust God or make the kind of decisions that we need to make. And there's many reasons why we've, uh, our dreams get locked down. And um, I, in the book I talk about dream stealers. And uh, we can let thoughts and ideas steal our dreams. We can let other people's expectation of what our dreams should be take away other dreams and we're trying to live that one out. And it's personal, you know, so it could be uh, different for everybody. 
And, um, but there are dreams that we just have to get more clarity. We gotta investigate, get some clarity so that what we're investing our life in really matters. I mean, a lot of people, their dreams are just simply, you know, hey, I wanna hope I win the lottery someday, or I I hope I play in the NBA, or, you know, I wanna start a business, or I wanna marry Drake. (laughs) He's popular, available, right? I know why you're laughing. You don't love him. That's not real love, that's fake love what you got there. (laughs) That joke went over much better in the first service. (laughs) This is the older crowd. (laughs) Anyway, we come up with these ideas and dreams, but unlocking what it's all about. You know, I don't think I knew what God wanted me to do really when I started. I started doing what I believed he would want me to do, and things began to unfold. Sometimes we're not moving forward because we're waiting for that extraordinary opportunity, that extraordinary thing. But let me just tell you a secret. The extraordinary is usually hidden in the ordinary. (laughs) And the reason that I know that is You might seem ordinary, but the extraordinary is hidden in you. But we see opportunities and we think, uh, you know, oh, I'm kind of busy. I got to do, I'm going about trying to reach my dream. And we don't realize that there's an opportunity right there. This could lead you to it. Like Jesus is teaching and the little kids come up. And the disciples are like, no, 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 he's busy. Don't bother him. And he's like, no, let me just take this opportunity. Bring him in. Um, it could have been somebody calling out, hey, help me. And they're going, shh, don't, he, don't distract him. He's like, no, this is why I'm here. And those kind of things would lead to miracles in his life. And, um, but unlocking that dream is a journey. I think about my own journey and I never imagined that I would be here in this building 32 years into it, um, reaching the people we're reaching. I just started out like serving in churches and serving as a youth leader and serving in the worship department and assisting a pastor and I served in one where we would set up and take down every Sunday. And so I, that's what I did, help pack the truck and unpack the truck and all that kind of stuff. And one thing would lead to another opportunity. And um, the church came out of a Bible study, study that started with 10 people. We didn't even start the Bible study with me thinking, ah, this is how we're gonna start the church. As a friend of mine said, hey, Um, You know, he would have Bible studies in his home for a year or two, and then he would stop for a few months and then start another one. And and so he goes, hey, I'm going to start a Bible study, and we only got like eight or ten people, but would you be willing to teach it for a while? So I'm like, okay. You know, if I said, no, I'm kind of beyond that now. I'm looking for the masses, you know. (laughs) I'm looking for the crowds. There's only ten. Um... But I just went and started doing it, started loving the people and encouraging them, and somebody invited somebody, and it went on and on. And, but um, I have to unlock those dreams. Um, I, uh, I think about some of the things I love about this church, and one thing is the racial diversity in our church. And there is nothing that I know that we've intentionally done other than just treat everybody the same. And my friends are different colors and heritage, and our leaders are different colors and heritage, and we try to be aware of that now that it's become such a big part of our church so that we're trying to pay attention and meet people's needs. But 
But I was raised in a home uh, when I was in elementary school. They were racist. I didn't know it at the time, but that's the way life was. And um, I, one of my dreams would be to have a great, healthy marriage. My, um, my dad and mom got divorced. It became really mean-spirited and split the family up. But we came from this really conservative, denominational church. And in their book, when you get divorced, your gifts and ministry are done. You're just now officially disqualified. Of course, they probably missed that verse, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. But... Um, <laughs> It's just one verse, but <laughs> it's a pretty big one. <laughs> so uh, so um, I'd been a, an assistant pastor in a church, and then I got married, and three months after we were married, the, my wife uh, went on tour. She worked with a rock and roll band and decided she didn't want to stay married and never came back to the marriage. Three months. And so what I'm dealing with is, oh, no. I didn't want to have that story. And now I'm going to be disqualified. I don't think my dad ever got over it. The first half of his ministry was much better than the last half. The last half, I, don't, I think he shamed himself. I don't think he ever gave himself permission to flourish again. But he was married the second time, 30 years, and to my mom, 24. So there I was. And I wasn't around that kind of people when I was a young man and went through that divorce. But still on the inside, it's like, you're done. None of my friends said that, but it's inside. Do you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever felt that something like, oh, man, I'm, I'm failed. It's over. It's like, man, it's over. And I barely got started. <laughs> And so then I met Holly, and we've been married over 30 years. And the interesting thing <laughs> is um, God has used us to help marriages and single people navigating through, is this the right one? What kind of, how do you prepare well? And, and we've been invited in several continents to talk about this. And then, and so, um, and one other thing, so that's the racial diversity in our church, the marriage sort of ministry and relationship ministry, and then just the number of young people in their 20s. When, when I was in my 20s, I had no clue. My dream was so locked up in my life and soul, I wasted most of my 20s. I mean, I started seriously following, following Jesus again when I was 27. So imagine this. nobody is going to say, okay, we need somebody to pastor this church with a multiracial congregation that really has it locked in on marriage and um, it really knows what it's like to follow Jesus in their 20s. Uh, here's Philip. <laughs> you know, God has a different way of working. So don't disqualify yourself if God has called you because he has a way of qualifying the unqualified. I think one of the things that disqualifies people the most is the hurts that we go through. The rejections the breakups, the betrayals. Um, I never get used to betrayal. And uh, it's been one of the hardest things for me to experience in ministry because I'm reaching people that I care about. I love them. I try to move them forward in their faith the best way I can, treat everybody as an individual because different journeys. And then to see some of those people, their life change and grow, and then to be betrayed by them is, is really hard to handle. And 
I feel like, I mean, it might just be because it's more fresh than before, but I feel like in the last two or three years, I've experienced more betrayal than many times in my life. And so I have to do what I tell everybody else to do is, okay, you gotta forgive. You gotta forgive. And the weird thing about forgiveness is it seems like it works for like a couple of days. <laughs> but then it's like they come back in your mind and go, ah, you know, it's like, it's like, shoot, I did it wrong. <laughs> and what I found is that forgiveness is something you choose every day. Just like his mercies are fresh and new every morning. Forgiveness is one thing, it always works, but healing is another. And healing, it comes over time. It's processing grief, it's trusting God, it's, but listen, that's a point where I can say, am I gonna let this experience disqualify me from reaching people? And so I think somebody would say, how do you keep the passion alive for what you're doing. And this is my honest answer, is that I think about the one who comes in here and is far from God, or comes in here and doesn't even know they need God, or they're, they come in here and they're, all their guards are up because they don't, you know, it's church and they've had bad experiences, and that I, I try to reach them with this message of, you're not disqualified. There's hope for you. God has something special for you to do. He's not holding your past against you. And you know why? Because I was that guy. And I came into church just thinking, okay, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is what I got to do to get my life together. But I didn't expect what happened. And so then when I look at individuals who may have really disappointed or betrayed me, I have this choice. It's like, am I gonna carry this up on the platform or am I gonna let the Holy Spirit work and heal so that I can reach that one? That's what I do. I remember somebody's coming this week, somebody's coming next week who has a dream that's been crushed. And what if we can bring it alive? What if we could introduce them to a Jesus who is not holding your past against you, but has something amazing for you to do? That's what unlocking it's all about, is growing and learning and dealing with the crap that life throws at you. And keep on going. And so I'm going to close this message today and, um, and pray. And I want to pray for everybody that might identify with, you know, I got some things in my life that have somehow locked up the dreams in my, in my soul. And, and I just want to pray that God will begin this work in you today. And that the God dreams, the idea of God dreams would come alive in you. And that those dreams that really do matter, that somehow are dead in you, come alive. Wouldn't that be awesome? I wanna, I'm gonna pray for you and, and I wanna ask you, uh, consider, make the decision, if the dreams really matter to you, why don't you come every Sunday in January? Just come every Sunday for January and see if you don't, aren't exposed to the information and the presence of God and all that could help you. I mean, come on, people go to the gym all the way into February. <laughs> so you could come to church every time in January, right? We could show them. I mean, I know I did that two or three years myself. I made it up to March once. <laughs> but I end up here. This is what it helps. Let's, let's pray. God, I thank you for each and every soul and life here today. And we thank you for loving us unconditionally. And I thank you, God, that you love us enough that you have something for us to do and to be and other people to impact. 
And I pray that, God, that you would bring healing of our soul, of our life. I, I pray that those bitter moments would begin to lose their grip on us and that we would experience the joy of living out the dreams in our heart and in our life and, and honoring you. I pray that you will show us uh, who we need to bring along in our life and what we need to learn and what attitudes we need to grow in so that we could be prepared for those opportunities you've prepared for us. Show us the way, Lord, and we will follow.